Hey guys, welcome to Real Talk Jamaica. I'm your girl, Kiwana Harris. Based on a study done on pregnant women in Jamaica, there was a 56% of postpartum depression recognized in new mothers, and 96% of that 56 were single women. So today, we'll be doing a decompression of this topic. Guys, please remember to like and subscribe and always tell a friend to tell a friend about Real Talk Jamaica. Talky Talk is up next and you know what this is. Tuesday we celebrated International Women's Day and it's so befitting for us to talk about this issue that affects so many women today. We'll hear firsthand how postpartum depression has affected a new mother and cascade how she has overcome this disease. Welcome Chantel Broderick. Hi Chantel, I'm so Hi. happy you are here. I'm glad to be here. Okay, so we're just going to go right into it. Just talk to me, we're going to be having a conversation. Just tell me your honest truth. Okay? Sure. All right, so we'll go right into it. So, how old is your daughter? Uh, she's three years old. She will be four in July. Okay. Is she attending school? Yes, she is. Okay. So, what was your pregnancy like? Tell us, oh. give us, give us an insight on your pregnancy. Okay, so uh, my pregnancy, it wasn't a difficult one, actually. I uh, went through the pregnancy smoothly up until I was about eight months, where I could hardly sit. Uh, I had toothache with it, so uh, about... Uh, eight months in my pregnancy, um, it became a bit of a challenge. So that's my pregnancy experience. Okay, so all up until that, till then. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you have a good support system throughout your pregnancy? I did, actually. I did. My parents rallied around me. I had my fiancé around me as well and siblings, so I wasn't alone. Okay, that's lovely. So... So how long after your pregnancy did you find out that you had postpartum depression? So uh, about a month or a little more after having my child, I realized that um, I was experiencing uh, postpartum depression, more so because uh, I was informed that she had colic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with colic, it's sleepless nights, constant crying. So it was very challenging starting at that time. What what um, gave it away that this was postpartum depression? Uh, when I realized that um, I need to get out of the house, I need to be away from my child, uh, feeling down, I got anxiety. That's how I know I still do um, have anxiety, but not that bad. Um, I was depressed. I felt alone because... Everything seemed normal once you're pregnant and expecting a child and once that child comes into the world and you're facing that issue, it felt lonely. It was lonely. So you felt lonely even though you had? Even though, because once the, the crying starts and everything, no one wants to um, pick up that part of it. So it was only me at one point, but my parents did step in. Okay. How did it affect your ability to carry out your role as a new mother? Oh Lord, it, it affected in every way possible. I felt like a failure. I felt like I, I, I just didn't know what to do, honestly. So I, w I was helpless and hopeless. 
So did it, um, all right, you did not, you felt like a failure. In what way? In what way you, you think you were feeling as a failure? In a way where uh, I am now a mother, but I honestly don't know what to do. I don't know which route to take. I needed someone to talk to. So I just felt right and then I felt like I failed. How was your feeling, feelings towards your child at this point? Uh, still love my child and everything, but I just didn't want to have to deal with the crying and the sleepless nights. But uh, apart from that, I sh still love her, everything, but I just didn't want the responsibility. Okay, so that was the issue, the responsibility yeah. part. You, you, you're thinking that that you, it was too much for you. Was that what was going through your head? Overbearing, yes. And you are new to this. Very you are new to it. I was. Okay. So there was any um, rift or anything between you and your daughter? No, just um, distance. That's it. Um, I just didn't want to be the one to comfort her. Um, I always call my mom or my dad. Um, can you do this for me? Can you? There was a point where I had my dad have to had to carry me in the car for long drives just to get her silent. The moment she turned, I felt paranoid. It was. It was that. So, did it take away anything from you being a, a new mother? You know, people say when you just have a baby, you're a new mother, you have that new mother glow and all of that. Did it take that away from you? Yes, it did. I was definitely not glowing. I looked like a zombie. My brother told me I looked like a zombie. I was not sleeping and I was not eating. So, how do you feel? In art, in that setting, in that time when all of this was going on, you said you still love the baby, but you just did not want to deal with the responsibility of being a mother. That's what you're saying, right? That's right. So, it, so how is your feeling towards your child now? Oh, that's my world. Look at her, smile. I don't regret it. I regret um, the fact that... Um, I was ignorant towards the situation mm -hmm. because at that point of time um, I was all about the place uh, even though I went to um, a private doctor they said nothing is wrong with the child went to children's nothing is wrong with the child the last uh, trip I took to a hospital they, they told me it was colic it was so bad that um, I called a friend and I started telling her about my experience, and she was like, oh, um, I'm familiar with that because she had a child before me. She said, um, it's colic. I know, I know this colic. I, hear, I heard the word before, but what, what can I do? And she started providing me with um, alternative, like um, long drives, um, keep, keep the baby moving, and so forth. So she was there for me, to be honest. So what what you're saying what i'm understanding from what you're saying is that the fact that the child was not feeling well was the reason that triggered your depression yes i because the moment um i felt like i don't know what to do i don't know what's wrong with her i felt like i wanted to give up okay did anyone in your family recognize this or your spouse, your father, your mother that was around, did they recognize that you were going through this? Um, my parents did, more so, more so my mom and my brother and sister-in-law recognized it mm -hmm. because he was the one who told me that I looked like a zombie, which means that I needed sleep. Um, my mother... <laughs> My mother actually figured it out the moment I stepped out the house um, and didn't want to come back. Oh, so you didn't want to go back home? No. No. Took a trip to town, left my baby with my parents, and I felt free. So when she called me like, when will you be back? Then reality kicks in. 
I have to go back. I didn't want to. How long you spent downtown? Um, a few hours looking for one item that I found a long time, but I needed space. So you just take that as a relief to just... Yeah, moment the foot step on the bus. Ooh, felt free. Like everything, like a weight off your shoulder. Yeah. Okay, so when your mother called, you know, and asked you to come back, how you felt? Reality kicks in, I'm um, sad again. I didn't want to go back. Wow. How did they assist you with dealing with this disease? They were very helpful. Um, there were nights where my mom and I took turns um, staying up with the baby crying. Where we were, um, it's, it was quiet, so the, once it touched 3 o'clock, 3 a.m., it's her time, and okay. I braced myself for it. So your parents stepped up, that's what you're saying. They what did. about your spouse? Uh, most of the part, um, for most part, at that time, uh, he was back and forth because um, he was in training. Okay, because of his job? Yes, because of his job. Okay. How did it affect your daily life in general? Then I had no life. So um, it affected my life in every way. Um, I miss the quietness. I miss the silence, per se. I miss the freedom. So basically, um, that, that's pretty much it for me. Um, it just gave me in. So what about your daily chores? like? You know, you're a new mom, you're supposed to be doing laundry, um, making a baby bottle, stuff like that. Did it affect you in your daily chores? Yes, very much so. Um, I have to say um, a big thank you to my mother-in-law, who was there with me as well um, in, in the middle part of it um, when I got back home because I was staring, staying at my parents. So, um, in regards to chores, um, my sister, my mom, they were very, very, very much helpful because I did not have the strength. Um, there was a point where um, I was in the fridge and I have the baby in my hand crying in the hours of the night because I just didn't know what to do. My sister-in-law, thank God for her, she helped me out as well when I went back home. So, a lot of people aren't aware of the term prenatal depression and this is something that affects new mother m sorry new mothers so while being pregnant good the symptoms varies from anger feeling hopeless as you mentioned before feeling like a failure it feels less interested you don't want to eat you're having suicidal thought sorry thoughts and just to name a few, thinking back, do you think you had this depression throughout your pregnancy or before you had your baby? Do you think you had prenatal depression? Um, I had depression, but um, not during my pregnancy. Um, more, the only thing that I experienced um, while being pregnant was anxiety. Okay, but that's part of prenatal of prenatal depression, you know, the yeah. anxiety feeling. Yeah, but um, at that point, I wasn't um, thinking about suicide or anything. I just felt like um, pacing and uh, jittering because I was even worried um, what my experience would be like once delivering. So I was just thinking ahead of time. I was thinking too fast. I was overthinking. So that's how anxiety kicks in. Mm -hmm. So you don't think you were experiencing prenatal depression at that time? No. Everything hits me after I had the baby. Okay. This has been an extremely riveting conversation. And I just want to highlight how strong you are. And for my final question, what did you do to overcome postpartum depression? The most that I did was uh, listen to music, um, be around others, because that helps a lot. I talk to people. Like, most persons who experience this situation don't normally talk about it. 
But what I do want everyone to know, it, it is good. It is okay to talk to persons, especially um, close friends or anyone you trust, actually, just to have it in the back of your mind that you are not alone. So, so that helps. And you didn't seek counseling or anything like I that? I didn't actually. But you, you think you should? Or should have? Sorry. I think I should have. Um, but, you know, um, it didn't happen at the moment. And I believe if I did, maybe I wouldn't experience some trauma um, later on, even after. Because I still do think about it sometimes. But talk to someone. Get it up, get get everything off your chest. Just get it off your chest. Just, yeah. just talk. Don't and be let alone. It out, right. Mm -hmm. That's the best advice you could give. Best advice I can give. Okay. And pray. Don't leave that out. Pray. Don't leave that out. Mm -hmm. That part. Pray. Pray. All right. Thank you very much, Chantel. <sighs> Recognizing that you have an issue is important and putting in the work to help yourself is just as important. If you are experiencing prenatal, postpartum depression, suicidal thoughts, or any other mental issues, please call Choose Life International at 876-920-7924. Their email address is clihelpingpeoplelive at gmail.com. So reach out and gain some clarity on what you are facing. And on that note, we'll be right back with more Real Talk Jamaica. And Fix Up Yourself is up next. Stay tuned. Talk Jamaica, where no topic is off limit. If you have not told that friend as yet, or even subscribe, please, may I beg you, hurry up and do it. Remember, guys, to leave a comment or a question in the chat. Today, we will not only be getting first and experiences, but we will be having the professionals to guide us. Here with us today is a mother of two, a graduate of the Caribbean School of Theology, and a psychologist, guidance counselor. Please help me welcome Mrs. Rosemary Stewart. Thank you, Rosemary, for joining us today at Real Talk. My pleasure to be here. All right, Mrs. Stewart, we're just going to jump right into the interview. And for our viewers, I'm going to ask you, what is your definition of postpartum de um, depression? So postpartum depression is a mood disorder that is usually experienced by women after giving birth. All right, so there are a number of characteristic symptoms that they would experience, um, ranging from changes in mood, changes in um, behavior, but it's based on the duration and the severity of these symptoms that would cause it to be classified as postpartum depression. So is there any specific signs that um, we as someone looking in can recognize that this person is going through postpartum depression? Definitely. So usually after the birth of a baby, women normally go through um, some mood changes and some of it usually called baby blues, is mild symptoms. So you experience sadness, irritability, you know, loss of pleasure in some activities, crying. But when it becomes more moderate or severe and it lasts for more than just a few days or two weeks, then that's when you begin to have concerns. So you lose interest in um, activities that you normally find interest in or pleasure in. You have um, severe mood swings, uh, just crying for no reason. There are significant changes in your sleep pattern, sleeping more or sleeping less, significant changes in the way you eat. So you're either eating more or you're eating less. There are feelings of worthlessness or 
uh, feelings of hopelessness. Sometimes there is lethargy or fatigue, just um, a host of other things. Sometimes there are, you know, loss of interest in the baby, not having any interest in the baby or other family members, or having thoughts of hurting yourself or the baby. So this depression then, it will influence a new mother's relationship with her baby. Yes, definitely. So normally, I mean, having a baby is an exciting event. You know, you are excited to see this new human being and you want to cuddle. But for persons who are experiencing postpartum depression, usually they tend to have a feeling of indifference towards the baby or sometimes not wanting to have, not wanting to bond or cuddle or have anything to do with the baby. Wow. So we also heard about um, prenatal depression and it's also very affluent in Jamaica. Can you give us a brief description of this and some of the symptoms that we can look for? So prenatal depression normally occurs during pregnancy. So while postpartum is after having the baby, Prenatal is usually during the pregnancy that, you know, you experience these symptoms of depression. Again, the sadness, um, having loss of interest in usual activities that you normally find pleasurable, changes in sleeping and eating patterns, um, feelings of guilt and irritability, worthlessness, hopelessness, sometimes even suicidal thoughts you know, not having any hope for the future and that kind of thing. But the difference is when it occurs. So the prenatal is during pregnancy while the postpartum is after giving birth. I think that a lot of persons are not really aware of, of the prenatal depression because you would hear persons mostly talk about postpartum depression. So the prenatal is not really, persons are not really aware, aware of this. So how can we assist someone if we recognize some of the signs? How could we assist someone with this depression? What would be the best thing that we could do for them? All right, so you're correct in saying that, you know, persons don't normally speak about it. In fact, the research has shown that a lot of persons with prenatal depression goes untreated and goes undiagnosed because persons don't tend to seek help during this time. So um, having those symptoms and being self-aware, knowing when you're experiencing something outside of the norm, even though pregnancy usually comes with hormonal changes and certain changes in mood and behavior, but when it becomes more intense, when it becomes severe, or it's lasting for more than a few days, then it, it needs for concern and for attention. So you can encourage persons to seek support Having a good support group is very good during this time. Persons that you can call on for help, persons that you can ask, you know, to just talk to sometime, just talk to somebody who can understand. Talking to your medical practitioner or your obstetrician and gynecologist, let them know what you're experiencing and that you're concerned about these things. Um, you know, speaking to a counselor, speaking to a psychiatrist, somebody that can, you know, assure you, give you the way forward what's the next best thing for you to do in order to have this rectified before it gets out of hand. And in Jamaica, you know that we normally tend to frown on mental illness. What do you feel is the best way to encourage someone to check into a mental health um, illness facility or to even talk to a counselor because they know we as Jamaicans, we feel like if we're going to talk to a counselor, is mad or mad or something like that. So how would you best advise someone who is going through something like this to speak to a counselor? So the important thing to recognize is that, remember, we are not just a physical being. And when you're going through an illness, you normally go to a physician, right? When you experience physical or physiological symptoms. So when something is going out of, outside of the norm emotionally or mentally, it's an illness. It doesn't define who you are. It's just an illness, just like you have hypertension or diabetes. All right. So separate yourself from the illness, knowing that it doesn't define who you are. So in order for you to feel better, because there is no good health without good mental health. So you want to address what's happening in order, especially if you're experiencing feelings of distress, 
if it's interfering with your daily functioning, you want to get some help in order for you to feel better and be able to operate better. All right, so you encourage the person to seek help. It's not that there is something wrong with you, it's just that you're experiencing these symptoms that interfere with your daily functioning and your feelings of well-being. Okay, thank you. So how can this be treated, postpartum depression? How can it be treated? So there has been research that showed that medication has helped, but the preference is usually for psychotherapy or talk therapy to treat it because usually when you're going through postpartum depression, the mother is feeding, breastfeeding, right? Nurturing the child. And sometimes medication can interfere. So one of the best um, practice that is recommended is talk therapy. You can also speak to your, your medical practitioner when you go for your postnatal checkup and they can guide you. In Jamaica, there are several options for you also. You can call the Ministry of Health and Wellness helpline. They have a 24-hour hotline. You can remain anonymous and just talk to someone, right? You can go to your medical practitioner, as I said, speak to a counselor, speak to a pastor, but speak to somebody. There is help, there is hope, and it can be treated. So the main thing is do not isolate yourself and don't talk to someone. Make sure you find someone that you can trust and you speak with them. That's the main thing that I'm getting That's from right. what you're saying. You're not alone. In fact, it is research has shown that one in every seven mother, you know, experience postpartum depression. So you're not alone. It is a condition that is treated. Remember, it's a condition. It's not who you are. It doesn't define who you are. So it can be treated. The important thing is reach out for help. Ask for help. What would you say to a young mother or any a mother going through postpartum depression now? What advice would you give them? I would tell them you're not alone. It's okay. You can get better, you can feel better. Speak with your partner, speak with a family member or a close friend, reach out to a counselor, speak to a medical practitioner. But all in all, you need a support system to help you walk through this difficult time. It's not incumbent on just you alone to be able to go through this. You don't have to suffer alone, get help. And there are persons that are willing and ready and able to assist. This is Rosemary Stewart. I want to thank you so much for your input and thank you for highlighting some issue. So, sorry, thank you for highlighting the issue and the pro and how we can get treated with this problem. I just want to thank you so much for this interview. You're very welcome and thank you for having me. Thank so you. reach out and gain some clarity on what you are facing. Coming up next is It A Buzz. As you know, social media always a key up and Jamaica is not a real place. So our first buzz topic is no other than Mr. Professional Funeral Mourner. For those of you who don't know him, his tagline goes like, As you're dead, call me. As you're dead, call me. Look here, I can't manage. Anyway, it is reported by the star that he has been hit by a dopey. So it looks like one of the funeral men. <laughs> Where am going to the keep dog? So, do you think this is poetic justice? Or is he just, and let me pronounce this right, a KRD producer, a KRD producer today, um, clout chasing? Yes, man. Leave your comment below and make one know if you think so. I don't really did for lick him dog for Joe. Yeah. Next on our list is a newly married couple. The thing is, this couple is a bit different. The young woman, a young black woman, and the man, a paralyzed black man. So the newly married couple made headlines with this picture as they celebrated their second year anniversary. 
social media users were astonished to see a black woman do such a thing. Most people were like, I've only seen this, seen this in white culture. Me personally just love love. If you love me, I just saw we are going to just roll the love. And wherever you find it, pitch a tent, keep it. But what do you say? Would you marry someone that's paralyzed? Leave your comment and let me know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so have you heard of curry iguana? Well, iguana is the traditional food in the colonial Mexico. So it's no shocker here that it's eaten. But persons in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, also persons in Trinidad and Tobago, are currying it down. Would you try the dish? Let me know in the comment, me not eat it. I mean love curry, me not eat it. If you wish to advertise with us at Real Talk Jamaica, we have you covered. 10 seconds, low, 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 $2,000. 15 seconds, you know, reasonable, three, five. And 30 seconds, we have you rated at 7,005. So call us or email us at Real Talk Jamaica and follow us on Instagram and you can also DM us. I know you enjoyed this evening because I sure did. So guys, remember, love one another. Have a good week. Kiwana Rich Harris signing out. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us.